you've been keeping up with the vlogs, you know that I've been planning on making some tonkatsu ramen broth because there are absolutely no ramen joints in the area that make tonkatsu ramen. Actually, there's only one ramen place that I would even consider eating at and that's 45 minutes away. Shout out to Issei Noodle. But anyway, that's what I have planned for today. I'm gonna be cooking. And this vlog is gonna be a behind the scenes look at how I make one of my cooking videos. As you can see, I already have my camera set up, but I don't have all my ingredients yet. Actually, I did have all the ingredients, but last night I got a little thirsty and I drank all the sake. So I gotta go get more sake, gotta go to the bank, and also gotta stop by the grocery store for one food item. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. You too. And I'm back. Got my sake. Got some spaghetti. I'll show you guys how to turn this into ramen. Also got some hair product. So first things first, I want to show you guys my camera rig. It is a big, bulky, but very effective. You gotta have a good tripod. I use the Manfrotto, I don't even know what it is. It's just, it's made of metal, it's heavy, it locks down perfectly, doesn't move at all. I've got my A6500 mounted here with the small rig cage on it, my microphone, battery pack. This is sort of the camera I use to shoot like the wide shots and when I'm talking to the camera. And then over here I have a Manfrotto, actually not a Manfrotto, this is a Tether Tools articulating arm that's attached to the neck of my tripod. And at the top I have my, I guess you'd call this like the overhead camera. So if I wanna get overhead shots, I can, I can do one of these and just boom, stick the arm out like so, super useful. Um, I can actually take this off like so, and then I can, I don't know, mount it anywhere I want, like on a refrigerator door if I wanted to. See, like that. And for microphones, always Rode. You know, Rode has consistently made really great microphones, so I just, I kind of stick with them. All right, before I start cooking, I do like to get everything in place. Doesn't matter if I'm recording or not. I, I just want to get all my ingredients laid out to make sure I have everything I need. All right, and the first thing that I'm going to be making is... We're going to start with our chashu, so I'm going to need my pork belly, and the green onion, garlic, what else, what else? Sake, organic sake, and then I already have mirin, tamari, and I I think that is it. You know, one of the most annoying things when I'm watching how to YouTube videos is there's always this one or two minutes in the beginning of a video that's just, a, they're just rambling about whatever. I don't know if it's the history of the food, where they first ate it or where they're going or, to, you know, there's just that intro that you don't really need to hear before a how-to video. I like jumping right into the action. I try to make my intros super, super quick. Another note about the intro is that I actually shoot the intro when I'm finished cooking usually. So that way I start with the finished product and can be like, today we're gonna be making chashu. If I do something like that, now I'm almost leaning towards not even talking in my videos because I noticed that one of my most popular videos is just me making ramen and I don't even talk, I just cook. Actually, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the camera right on the cutting board, get, you know, get that nice up close shot. And to do that, I like to use this little Manfrotto mini tripod. And my biggest gripe about shooting with the A6500 is that it does not have an articulating screen. So when I do shots like this, where I need to compose it, and I can't because, well, <laughs> the screen is against the wall here. You gotta get over it and look this way and see if I can see everything. Uh, no, see, and I can't. No, I need, I need the wide angle. 
Oh, another thing I don't like about the A6500 is for some reason they are really susceptible to dust. I'm always getting dust on the sensors. I need to get rid of this bowl of fruit. I do love the level feature on the A6500 so I can get it nice and even. Um, which I'm a stickler for because I used to shoot real estate photos. So I need to have my lines, my vertical lines, vertical and my horizontal lines even. So I can't stand it when I see the horizon and it's tilted. It just drives me nuts. All right. Uh, I think I'm good here. So I've got my pork in there and um, Right now I'm working with two different camera angles and I try not to move my cameras around, especially when I'm doing jump cuts because you know, it, it, it looks a lot cleaner if you do a jump cut and your camera angle hasn't shifted. Of course, that does leave me with a small dilemma because what I was planning on doing was actually making multiple videos. So I may actually have to move the camera, which I normally wouldn't do. But yeah, I'm trying to kill several birds with one stone. In the interest of saving time, I'm gonna go ahead and start recording my other video. So I'm gonna have to move the camera. I do try to cook a recipe a couple times before I actually record it. Just because you, you, know, you know what to expect and you know if the recipe is any good, but I'm going in blind on the tankatsu broth. We'll see, we'll see what happens. All right, I got my tonkatsu locked and loaded. I'm just gonna wait for it to start boiling. The technique that I'm using requires me to basically stir the tonkatsu every half hour. And you do this for, I think, total cooking time, two and a half, maybe three hours. But the last half of the boiling portion is um, stirring it and boiling it at the same time because it's a boiling action, not the pressure cooking action that makes that milky white opaque tonkatsu broth. If you just straight pressure cook it for three hours, it'll come out nice and tender, but uh, because water doesn't boil inside of a pressure cooker, it doesn't create that, um, that suspension of all the solids. Um, that's what the boiling action actually does. A little food science for you guys. And while my tonkatsu broth is doing its thing, I'm going to do my thing. I really need to go mow the lawn. Okay. Things look like they're coming along. Now I gotta go mow the lawn. Oh, great. Just great. I'm out of gas. Guess I gotta go get some. We're back on the Generation Dance Grind. Field hockey is over. Alyssa seems much happier and less stressed. Not that she doesn't hate field hockey, it's just field hockey is different. Field hockey? It's tough. It's tough. And, and it's stressful. Because it's like for away, for away games, I have like a six hour school day and then a six hour field hockey day. Yeah, true. What happened in the time lapse I was doing? What was that? 
What were you saying about a bee? I told you a wasp was flying around in the house. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was the scariest moment of my life. I feel so bad. And I was so scared. Uh. And then I kind of felt bad because like it was dead like this one snap. You killed it. Yeah. Bees die when you hit it. Alright, I have finished my tonkatsu broth. It's been sitting in the fridge overnight. This is what it looks like now. Check out that color, milky white. And look at that. It's like a it's like a bowl of pork jello. And because it's congealed like that, that means that there's a lot of fat and connective tissue that broke down, and that's what gives it that rich porky flavor when you eat a tonkatsu ramen. So all I got to do now is make my tare, which is the flavoring for our ramen broth. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but ramen broth consists of two things, the soup and the tare. And for tare, you can do something like, um, you can actually use the braising liquid from my, um, from my chashu. Uh, but I wanted to keep it kind of a clean or not clean, but I didn't want too much soy flavor because the eggs, uh, by the way, I, I have the, um, my soft boiled eggs marinating in that braising liquid. So I'll have, <gasps> that just went down my sleeve. But anyway, I'll have plenty of soy flavor from the egg and my chashu. So I'm gonna flavor my my ramen broth with salt. And then I'm probably also gonna add some of this bonito soup stock to give it that, that umami component, which is super important in ramen. Oh, and a side note, instead of making my own ramen noodles, which I've done before and turned out very well, I'm gonna try a different method. I'm gonna take spaghetti and turn it into ramen. Apparently when you boil it with baking soda, it converts spaghetti into more of a ramen-like texture. So I'm curious to see how that works. Home stretch, home stretch. You gotta work fast in this last phase. Getting my tonkatsu broth nice and hot. My toppings are all prepped, ready to go. And here we go, here we go, here we go. Hot broth, hot broth. that ramen broth. The first time I ever made it and it's killer. Really, really good. Going in, I'm going in. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that behind the scenes look of one of my cooking videos. I tell you what, this is pretty dang good tankatsu. The only thing that I would change up is maybe use angel hair pasta or just make your own ramen noodle because these are a little thick. And uh, for a tonkatsu broth, you want a thin noodle. But oh man, that's, that's excellent.